The world is in a very serious and weird predicament right now, and in times like these, one can only seek refuge in a Zeon. Or I guess, should they seek refuge in a Zeon? That is the question for today's video that I hope to answer, where we've got an E5 2678 V3, which features 12 cores, 24 threads, and the thing about this is it's coming in at 110 US dollars shipped internationally. The accompanying X99 motherboards, at least on AliExpress, they're actually really good value for money, where you can get the Machinist X99, which is the one that we used in today's video. You can also get the Atomiter, as well as the WAN and Z. And I do recommend getting the WAN and Z out of all these three motherboards if you can afford the extra, because it does add a very good value proposition to this CPU, which we'll talk about a little bit later in this video. But firstly, let's talk about exactly what the Xeon is and why it's so good at its current price point. And that's got to do with the fact that it's an old Xeon server CPU that's now becoming mass available on the used market. The motherboards are cheap, and of course the accompanying DDR3 memory is very cheap if you get this particular version. Now you do have to do your research with these CPUs, and hopefully these videos will help you out in the process if you wish to buy one of these. Because what I'm holding right now is the 2678 V3, which is pretty much exactly the same CPU as the 2680 V3. The only difference really is that this is actually a better model in that it supports DDR3 registered as the original 2680 V3 and also the 2620 and 2640 V3, they don't support DDR4 registered. I did take a look at these CPUs, I'll put the link to that video up there, where they're gonna be a better recommendation in my opinion for gamers and someone who wants performance now and just wants to save as much money as possible and go with say a four by four gigabyte DDR4 solution of memory. So let's move on to the gaming benchmarks. And one thing about these CPUs is that I've unlocked all the Xeon V3s that you see in today's graphs, I've turbo unlocked them. And so if you buy one of these, you will want to turbo unlock them as you're going to get the max turbo multiplier on all cores, which really extracts the value for money out of these particular Xeons. If you're interested in buying one of these CPUs and doing this mod, for yourself, then I'll put the link to that video up here. So let's pull up the first gaming benchmark where we can see a trend that's going to develop through these games where uh, F1 2019, this CPU right here, the 12 core Xeon, actually lost to both the six core and the eight core when I paired it with an RTX 2080 Ti. And even though it was losing in these graphs, it's still an absolutely fine score, especially if you want to get on say 144 uh, Hertz monitors whether they're IPS or TN, this is still gonna be a great CPU for that. The Wonder Shadow of the Tomb Raider, just like F1 2019, you weren't really gaining anything from going up four cores and eight threads on this particular title. And the uh, six core was actually winning out the value for money proposition here. And the eight core was doing the best in terms of its max performance on these V3 Xeon lines. It is overclocked 100 megahertz higher, however, as you can see there with the max multipliers being 3.2, 3.3, and 3.4 between these three different Xeons. Though onto Fortnite showed that at high settings, the uh, 12 core Xeon, of course, was doing very well, scoring 264 average FPS. The 1%, 0.1% lows were good. If we stop this down to, say, low settings with epic distance, 100% render scale, we were getting extremely high FPS. So this 12 core Xeon has no problems doubling down as a gaming CPU if you want to be competitive at Fortnite. Though continuing on, this is where the good news stops for the 12 core, pulling up Assassin's Creed Syndicate. We had significantly lower FPS than the 8 core in particular, and I can only guess that this is just due to the game not really being, uh, well, playing nicely with this 12 core 24 thread where the eight core was beating it out and even the six core was getting a better score too. Though onto Far Cry New Dawn, this showed the same trend as Assassin's Creed Syndicate. So the value for money proposition is this being a gaming CPU is starting to look a little bit lower. And when I moved over to Tarkov, I actually just had to can this benchmark because the game was just playing up. I could not get it to run properly where it was getting literally half the FPS that it should be getting. And of course the eight core and six core did a lot better when I tested these in the past. So basically as it stands, uh, games really have to be optimized for 12 cores, 24 threads, or at least not be buggy with this CPU in order for it to work properly. As we saw, Fortnite works absolutely fine with this CPU. F1 2019 works pretty well too, but some of the games like Assassin's Creed Syndicate and uh, Tarkov especially were just not running up to par. 
So coming out of those gaming benchmarks, the 6 and 8 core variants, not just within the Z Online, but all other ranges, were doing a better job than this uh, 12 core right here. So as it stands, I think games aren't properly optimized for any more than eight core 16 threads. And going into the future, we've already seen the PS5 specs and Xbox Series X specs uh, touted, and they're pretty much gonna be 16 threads max as well. So you can see going into the future that the eight core 16 threaded CPU is going to be the best play for at least the foreseeable future in the next few years, I'd say at least another four years. And so having the extra four cores and eight threads there is really only a good option if you know you're going to utilize that. Say for instance, you're gonna be playing games and then maybe watching movies or streaming and editing videos while you're streaming at the same time, or your Discord, Skype, or if you wanna make a new meta in the streaming industry, you can be streaming while you're playing games and watching porn. I'm sure the viewers will absolutely love it, and you can do that with this $110 CPU right here. Though onto some productivity benchmarks, here's where this 12 core really starts to shine out, and I feel like if you're going with a workstation first, gaming desktop second, this is where this CPU is really going to put in the value for money punches. Where if we look up first of all 7-zip, we can see here the compression numbers is actually beating out that of a 9900K. Uh, the decompression numbers are still very respectable against these higher end CPUs here. Uh, moving over to the, I'm not gonna pronounce the name because I don't wanna get demonetized, 1.3 benchmark. Again, this was scoring a really respectable score with 159 seconds, and that was coming in the same league as these other CPUs here, which cost a lot more. And then moving over to Geekbench 4, we had a very good multi-threaded score, of course, 12 cores, 24 threads, and then the single thread was lacking behind a bit, and this continues on into Cinebench R20, where the multi-threaded score is very impressive, scoring over 4,000 points, and then the single-threaded score is coming in the same range as the other two Xeons. So of course, the last thing to talk about is the power consumption, where this CPU is going to use up 120 watts once you unlock it in practically every benchmark that has 100% CPU utilization. And you may notice from some of the B-roll that I'm showing here that the CPU doesn't always stay at 3.3 gigahertz all cores. And that's because of the 120 watt TDP that Intel implemented with this CPU. Pretty much motherboards using these server chipsets have to pretty much strictly adhere to that 120 watt TDP rating. It's different as opposed to overclockable motherboards. That TDP score, in my opinion, doesn't carry as much weight in the enthusiast market as it carries in the server industry. So once this CPU hits 120 watts, it then starts to downclock to around 3 to 3.1 gigahertz. So if you're doing uh, heavy workloads, that's what you can expect this thing to all core at. And then if you're gaming, you can expect it to go to 3.3 gigahertz, all cores all the time. Though with all that out of the way, this CPU here makes an excellent balanced CPU that's going to last you a very long time, whether you're gaming or whether you're going to be making a cheap workstation, where this is the, I guess I said it's the jack of all trades, and I didn't say it was the master of none because it is the master of one and that is value for money. What I'm holding in my hand right here is uh, 64 gigabytes of ECC registered DDR3 memory. And now I got this for 80 Aussie dollars, which would just be a little bit over 50 USD. And when you look at the price of that memory and compare it to DDR4, so if you want to go with uh, say Ryzen CPUs or something else that's newer and latest and greatest, you're going to be adding to the cost substantially when you can pick up yourself some cheap DDR3 registered memory, make a good 4K video editing rig on a budget, and you're still gonna be getting very good performance. So that's where the extra value of the 2678 V3 really starts to pull ahead. And that's why in the intro, I did recommend that if you guys wanna get this CPU, go grab yourself that one and Z, which then has the uh, four memory slots for DDR3. And basically there it all is with the 2678V3. Now, some things to consider as well is if you're going to get the CPU, don't go out and buy expensive uh, DDR4 or DDR3 memory. And that goes for all the V3 uh, turbo models here when you do the turbo unlock. Because they got quad channel memory and the motherboards use server chipsets, you're not going to be able to overclock the memory. Uh, on that though, you can actually overclock the memory, but it's not guaranteed. And it's a very tedious process where you've got to manually inject text into the BIOS and have it lock those as default profiles. And if you screw that up, then you're just gonna be wasting yourself a lot of time. And that's where the benefit also of DDR3 comes in, where it's already got those low timings and 1600 megahertz, and then you quad that up, 
you're going to have pretty much essentially the similar speeds to 3200 megahertz on the DDR4 side of things. So really good value proposition there. I like this CPU where it's coming in at though. Keep in mind, it's not the best dedicated gaming CPU. It's got all those extra cores and threads, mainly if you need them. And if you know you need them or you wanna say gear up a PC for the future, then this CPU is definitely gonna be one worth considering, especially when we look at, and actually we'll tie this in with the question of the day, where Ezra Litton, and I, I like the name Ezra, I was watching that on the Star Wars Rebels. There's Ezra, he was pretty cool. Uh, they asked, why would someone do this instead of buying used Ryzen 1600s and B350 motherboards? Uh, basically, this is where the difference is, as I explained with the DDR3 registered, and also the fact that this is readily available at the moment in this current uh, time and this period of what we'd call chaos. And so new Ryzen stuff, I know for new Ryzen stuff, the Ryzen 5 uh, 1600 AF, I'm going to be doing a video on that but I'm gonna wait until that comes back in stock because what I'm seeing is this CPU is starting to get sold out everywhere. This CPU is still in stock and it looks like the um, shipping lines are starting to clear up as well. So if you order it, you'll probably be waiting the typical three to four weeks rather than what I had to do and wait like literally two months. And also the DDR3 registered motherboard that I ordered, that got canceled like right at the last minute. So I've had to reorder that and it's unfortunate because I was going to do a X99 budget I'll express motherboard roundup for you guys, but that'll have to wait probably another month or so now. So I look forward to giving that video for you guys. Though do let us know in the comments section below what you think of the 12 core 2678 V3. Would you get one or wouldn't you get one? If not, why? If so, why? Love reading those thoughts and opinions as always. And if you guys enjoyed this video, then be sure to hit that like button for us. And if you're enjoying the content around Tech Yes City, then you know what to do. And I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.